Hello, I'm Dr. Carl, and today I wanted to talk about how I feel alienated from both sides of the political spectrum. I've been right-leaning my entire life, and I still mainly am, and the left is as insane now as they've ever been, and so obviously I don't see anything, not a whole lot positive coming from that side. But at the same time, while some people who have been left-leaning their whole lives are saying conservatives are the only ones showing any sanity nowadays, it's heartbreaking to me to see that there are aspects appearing on the political right that I don't like. I should mention there are two broad causes that I've had my whole life that cut across the traditional right-left divide. One is my staunch support for the Euro-Atlantic community and its institutions, namely NATO, the European Union, the Euro, the Schengen Open Borders Agreement. And the other one is my support of the men's rights movement. Again, it started out more as a desire for equality in general, but feminism was so one-sided and so vicious and nasty that equality for men is something that needs to be emphasized. And I've made a long list and made a video about this of all the ways in which men face discrimination. I, I want to talk about the first of those uh, two things first. Traditionally, I can remember when I was like um, a teenager in the 90s, support for uh, the European Union within the countries of Europe kind of cut across the right-left divide. In some countries, like one of my three countries, Sweden, it was the right that was much more pro-European Union, whereas in Britain it was the left. But it was kind of a general consensus in favor of it, uh, and it wasn't truly the right-left divide. And even now, and certainly back then, far-left parties um, in countries like France or Sweden were just as opposed to it as some of the nationalist parties on the right were. But following the Brexit fiasco in Britain, it is gut-wrenching and heartbreaking how many people within the Anglosphere on the right have come to so blame my beloved European Union for all of their admittedly legitimate grievances. As one person said, Brexit was the um, wrong answer to the right question. But um, certainly within the United States, a lot of Republicans think it's a horrible thing and they think it's... Um, harming national identity. Well, I mean, I'm a U.S. citizen too, but I'm also a European Union citizen, and I love having European Union citizenship. Now, in the long run, I'm fairly optimistic on this front because um, Brexit has proved to be the best advertisement campaign the European Union could have hoped for, but it's going to take a while for conservatives in, in Britain, who are usually right on everything else, to realize how horrendously wrong this whole fiasco has been, and for Britain to finally rejoin the European Union. In a related note, I'm surprised that some people on the political right in the U.S. have become so allergic to any form of international cooperation that they don't even like NATO anymore. NATO was always something Republicans strongly supported. After all, that's what helped bring down the Soviet Union and communism in Eastern Europe. And in the 90s, it was the Democrats who were reluctant towards NATO enlargement. Now, it breaks my heart to see so many fellow Republicans not want to continue to enlarge NATO into Ukraine and Georgia, another country I'm a citizen of. We must help Ukraine and Georgia after all, as the U.S. ambassador to Bulgaria back when I was in the Peace Corps there said, NATO and the European Union are like this zone of security and peace, and we want to expand it to more and more countries of Europe. And I would have thought my fellow Republicans would have been much better about that, and it's gut-wrenching and disappointing. I should add a note, I say fellow Republicans, but I failed to renew my membership in the party last year, and I've not done it again this year, partly because I'm disgusted by some of these things. And that brings me to an even bigger point. While the majority of conservative pundits in the United States and conservative politicians do support Ukraine, thankfully, I am shocked how many don't. I mean, come on. You're supporting Russia in its brutal invasion of a sovereign, independent country like Ukraine? Totally unprovoked? As one person said, I mean, I get it. Many of you are at the point where if CNN says X, then the answer is Y. I get it, but okay, every now and then there's the broken clock, you know. 
I mean, if CNN supports Ukraine, hey, CNN got something right for once. So, I mean, don't be so blind that you just reflexively go the other way like that. And I also want to discuss uh, conservatives and the men's rights movement. Now, again, this cuts across the right-left divide as there are a lot of feminists who have been extremely vicious towards those of us in the men's rights movement. Indeed, conservatives have been far more tolerant towards us because conservatives are much more tolerant towards those with whom they disagree with in general. But one thing that has come up recently that really just sort of irks me, again, unlike failing to support NATO or the European Union, this is not a new thing, but still it's upsetting. I have always despised sex of service registration in the United States. For those of you not from the U.S., upon turning 18, all young men are required to register with the military for a potential draft. Women are not. Now, no one has been persecuted, I mean prosecuted, under this law since I believe 1989. Instead, there's backdoor enforcement, like in many states you can't get a driver's license. If I'm not mistaken, there's seven states where you can't even enroll enroll in a uh, state uh, college. See, these people are too gutless to enforce their disgusting law, so what they do is they uh, make life difficult if you fail to register with this nonsense. All I have ever wanted all these years is to see this horrible law repealed. There's now talk of expanding it to include women, and a group I'm a member of, proud to be a member of the National Coalition for Men, has been campaigning to either expand it to include women or, most of us would say, better yet, just end it. And now you got people on the right saying, don't draft our daughters. Well, what about your sons? You don't care about your sons? That's a huge sexist double standard. I got a much better idea. Don't draft anyone ever. How's that? Um, so basically, for these things I feel very passionate about, my love of the European Union, my love of NATO, and my uh, desire to see genuine gender equality, especially ending sex of service registration. Put these things together, I, I don't really feel comfortable with a political right anymore. And again, I think at this very moment in time, the ultimate one would be those who uh, support Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which again, thankfully, is not the majority, but still, it's a lot more than it should be. So for these reasons, I don't feel entirely comfortable with the right anymore, but of course, the left has gone completely crazy, and I'm as against that as I've ever been. So I'm screaming out, can we finally have some common sense uh, political parties emerging? I'm Dr. Carl. Enjoy.